headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships, never the fake kind. To my right is Dr. John Deloney, and he'll be co-hosting it up with me for the next couple of hours. Hey, give us a call. The number is 888-825-5225, and we would love to take your calls as it relates to your life, your money, whatever's going on in your world. We want to talk about it, especially if it concerns your finances or your relationships. Like I said, that number is 888-825-5225, and we will look forward to talking to you. In the meantime, John, I got to tell you, I'm really, really excited. Uh, I see here on my desk that the marriage and money, money and marriage getaway is back. It's back. Um, And you joined us last year. It was a party. I did. It was amazing. I don't think we've ever done an event like that at Ramsey before. Never. It was the first of its kind for sure. First time ever. And it was so successful that um, it was a 50%. I've never seen anything like it. A 50% buyback, which means... Half of the audience there bought tickets for next year. Shoot. We had to invent new VIP tickets because they were all sold out. Um, <laughs> so this fall, October 24th through 26th, join me, Rachel Cruz, probably Jay. Come on, let and, me in. Uh, you're in. And a whole gang of us um, for a weekend away in Nashville, Tennessee, right here on campus to focus on your marriage. Two and a half days of teaching on communication, sex and intimacy, money. We cover everything. I was shook, John. When I, when I walked into the auditorium at one point, like I don't blush easily, but I was like, this is kind of, there, there, we you into won't, it. Here's the deal. The promise is you won't leave without a question. If, if, if the only reason you won't get your question answered is if you don't ask it, right? No holds um, barred. Lots of Q and A's. Uh, you and your spouse walk away with the tools you need to build a deeper connection and win with your marriage, your money, with your kids, all of it. Platinum tickets are gone. Very few VIP tickets left. And after today's announcement, they're going to be gone too. Here's the deal. This is a great uh, Valentine's uh, present for your significant other. So if you're wondering what to get them for Valentine's Day, buy them tickets. Say we're going to Nashville in October. Everybody will win. It'll be good. And Um, if you can, let me me just add this. If you can get the VIP tickets. Yeah, it's legit. Because... I was part of that VIP event, and let me just say, you go to a private place that's secluded, that's yeah. amazing, yeah. and all the personalities are there, and it's like drinks and bourbon and it's good. wonderful appetite. Like, it's quite the they in last year it'll be we'll do different things but this year um some different things some same things but we we threw a prom which ended up getting off the rails i saw some things got off the rails (laughs) i even started blushing and i don't blush um but we're we have a musical guest show up it's just a it's just a blast go to ramseysolutions.com slash events ramseysolutions.com slash events Ooh, can't wait all right let's hit up these phone lines john Let's go to Emily, who's in Boston, Massachusetts. What's going on, Emily? Um, doing well. Thank you for your work, and thanks for taking my call. I'm glad you're here. How can we help? Um, well, my husband, um, I knew he had a drinking problem, but I didn't really know the extent of it. And um, Anyway, I found out he had not been paying the mortgage, and um, he ended up going into a rehab Um so he's there and so I have to figure out the finances because I had let him um, be part of the finances Mm -hmm. so um, and part of his assignment in the rehab is he had to tell me about any debts he had and so I found out he had about 70,000 in um, personal loans and about 40,000 thousand in credit card charges that I didn't know about. Um, so I guess, um, so I can't make minimum payments on those things. So, um, he does have a 401k that is like 400 or 300,000. So someone told me I should uh, um, have him ask for a hardship withdrawal to mm. pay off these things. Um, I'm, I'm not ready sure. to go to that yet. Yeah, please don't do that. Please don't do that. Anything else that you want to unpack before um, we dig in? Yeah, I mean, I I don't really have much 
um, he's not out of there yet, so I don't really have much communication. So I don't. How long is the rehabilitation? Um, it's like a few more weeks. Like and two he, or six? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, um, so I just need to figure out, you know, how to make a budget and how to try to manage things. I, I guess I'll be in charge of finances. Well, let me let John jump in because I think the money is going to be secondary to how you're going to cope with him being back from rehab. Yeah, you, you still sound scorched earth. Like you, st- yeah. you still sound like you got home and your house is burned to the ground and you're looking around. How long has you been gone? Um, for uh, since the beginning of the year. Okay, how long? And and I'm not asking this in an accusing way. I'm asking this just in a practical way. How long have you been just kind of deer in headlights? Like everything feels so overwhelming, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, I was able to make you know, the payments on the mortgage and okay. rectify the mortgage. So I've, I've like stabilized things. Okay. All right. So the a, a one key here is you're going to have to feel this. You're going to have to grieve this. Y'all are going to have to rebuild your marriage from, from ash. Okay. Everything that, w- that was before is going to be different now. And you, you feel that, but it's just important to say it out loud. And... That's not time. It's not time for that yet. It's time for you to stand up as tall as you can, get some women in your life that you trust to walk with you. And you've got to, like you said, I'm not going to, I just got to figure out a budget. No, you are now trying to save your own life for a season. Okay. Right. I'm going to, I am going to declare that I'm going to make a budget. And I'm going to follow it. And I'm going to find all of these debts. And I'm not going to borrow against our family's future in order to clean up a bunch of nonsense. I'll call these debtors and say, I'll get to you when I get to you. I have no money right now. And we're going to go from yeah. right? So it, I want you to hear that I'm, I'm standing up as tall as I can. And there is going to be an element of fake it till you make it. That's okay. That's okay. Mm-hmm. But never again are you going to put all of your debts are you going to put all of your I don't even know how the mortgage is getting paid any of that kind of stuff I'm never going to put that all in one person okay I want you to hang on the line we're going to keep you over because I want to talk through some very tactical things Jade's going to talk to you about some money some very tactical money things when we come back from the break you're going to be standing six inches taller some of it you're going to be faking it some of it's going to be for real Because we are going to reclaim your life. And then when your husband gets out of rehab, he's going to be different. And so are you. We'll be right back. Hey guys, I've told you before about Christian Healthcare Ministries, a health cost sharing ministry, but listen to Jenna, a CHM member. She says, one of my biggest concerns about entrepreneurship and motherhood was figuring out how to take care of our health expenses. But we have found a solution that works for us in an incredible way. She loves that with CHM, she can help other families who need it and receive help back when her own family has an eligible medical event. CHM has been a godsend for Jenna. That's her CHM story, and it could be yours. Learn more and join at chministries.org slash budget. All right, you are listening to The Ramsey Show. I'm Jade Warshaw. This is John Deloney. And uh, the last segment, we were talking to a wonderful lady named Emily. She was telling us a little about her situation with a husband who has gone away at rehab uh, for alcoholism. And she is at home trying to make 
sense of what's going on with the money mortgage was behind, but she got that up to date, but has found out that her husband has what looks like over $100,000 racked up in different personal loans and credit card loans and things like that. Uh, Emily, did I get it right? Did I leave anything out? No, that's correct. So John was telling you, you know, by the time this segment is over, we're going to make sure you're standing tall, feeling confident. I had a couple of questions to ask. Do you guys have kids? Yes, yeah, four. Did you say four? Yes. Oh, my goodness. What are their ages? Uh, the oldest is 18 and the littlest is uh, six. Okay. And um, are you working outside of the home? Yes. What do you do? Um, I'm a nurse. Okay. And how much income are you bringing in? About 100000 And what did your husband bring in? About the same. 100000 okay. okay. Did he lose his job? <laughs> no. Okay. So he'll come back to that same salary? Yes. Okay. All right. So, you know, I'm looking at this and I'm going, okay, you guys have a great income. A, I hate to say it like this, but personal issues aside, financially, you guys have a, the ability to clean this mess up. Um, and I see that in the numbers. It is going to take you getting on a budget, uh, like John mentioned before. Um, and I think that's something that you can do on your own at this point. Because, John, I, I want you to chime in here. Because at what point when you're dealing with a situation like this, when do you decide, okay, for the time being, you don't have access to the money or you have access to whatever you're bringing in. But I, like, at what point do you draw a clear line and say, I haven't been able to trust you financially. And so I'm going to have to take this. And until we decide otherwise, talk to that. I, I anytime somebody's um, struggling with addiction, somebody's using or somebody's gambling, it's, it's, it, it's just, it's self-preservation. You have to. Right. Um, and so if somebody, if I got out of rehab mm -hmm. and I'd been gone on a 30 day treatment program and my wife was at home, mm -hmm. I would be in favor of establishing a 90 or 120 days where I don't have access to things. Yeah. And that is doing two things. One, letting my wife reestablish trust in me mm -hmm. and me in her. And number two, making sure our house has footing. Because yeah. you're going to come right back to the same temptations, the same life, the same busy four kids, the same chaos. Um, a wife who's making six figures as a nurse, and then I'm making six figures in my job. All that stuff comes rushing back at you, right? You get 30 days in solitude where you can breathe. You got counselors all day. You got a, you got a team. You got a group of people. Um, it's a lot when you get out. So I would definitely recommend them building in some, hey, I have... I'm, I'm paying bills for the next three months, four months, five months, six months, mm -hmm. and we're going to slowly reintegrate this thing together. Emily, does that sound like something that the man you know would go along with? Um, I hope so. I'm not sure. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Are you, is, is your marriage going to survive this? Or do you have any interest in still being married to this guy? I, yes, I Yes, I'd like to give him a chance. Okay. I think it's really important that you, like I said, sit with a counselor or with a couple of women and you verbalize out loud, but I want you to create a list of needs and a list of um, wants moving forward. That way mm -hmm. there's no guessing. There's, it's going to be clear as kind. You're going to lay out for this marriage to, um, for me to be invested in rebuilding this marriage from the floor up, here's what must be true. You can't drink. Mm -hmm. You can't be violent yeah. in the home. You, w mm -hmm. we will pay bills together every week, right? Like whatever you need to reestablish trust in your home. And by the way, you're gonna have to reestablish trust with Emily. Fair? Yes. Yes. How yeah. much of this are you weighing on yourself that you can't believe that you let it get like this? Oh, a lot. Okay. I want you to let that go. Yeah. Okay. We're going to let that mm -hmm. go. We learned a lesson and it's not going to happen again. Does that sound yeah. fair? Yeah. Okay. Did we answer your questions? I want to make sure we, we, we got you all the help you need before yeah. you, before you, before you go. Yeah. I think it'd be fair to say, you know, he would not have access to things. Um, I guess I'll have to contact these different and 
say I can't pay them. I don't, I don't know. Well, what, let's talk about that a little that bit. Um, on a scale of one to 10, how confident do you feel with managing money or paying bills? Um, not, maybe a three. <laughs> okay. So before we get off the call, I'm going to make sure you get set up with every dollar, which is our budgeting app. It's really intuitive. It's very easy to walk through your homework from me. John gave you some homework. My homework is I want you to download every dollar and I want you to splurge on the premium version because you can afford it. And I want you to start plugging in those numbers tonight. I want you to start filling it in. It's going to have a place for you to list your income and when you get paid. And then from there on, I want you to write out everything that your heart can think of that you you might possibly spend money on the bills that you know about and even things that you hadn't really, you know, that you don't do, you know, all the time. But it's like, well, we might spend money. It's my daughter's birthday coming up or whatever it is. And I want you to fill out that budget until the number above gets to zero. You're making a zero based budget. And that's going to give you a lot of peace and just honestly visibility to see where you guys' money is going. Because $200,000 is a lot of money to bring in. And then there's a section where you can list out the debts. Now, you told me that uh, your husband racked up 70000 in personal loans and 40000 in credit cards. My guess is there's probably some more debt laying around. I'm guessing... Yes. Yeah. Some yeah, cars, sure. yeah. some other things yep, like that. Yep. So I want you to go through that. And hey, um, Austin, will you set her up with customer care? I want to see yeah. about coaching. I want to see about Ramsey Plus. I want to give her the whole shaboodle because she needs it. She's been going through it. And I want to make sure that she is set up. Um, and one last thing, job. Emily. It might require this uh, getting well on the back end of this might require selling your house and y'all moving to apartment for a season. It might require selling the cars. It might require selling the lake house or the boat or the whatever it's going to take to get squared up. Do not borrow from your 401k. You're not there yet. You're not even close to there yet. And um, be prepared to keep all of these things that you your life revolved around, these vacations, these homes, these assets. Hold them very loosely with an open hand because the goal here is a new marriage. The goal here is financial security. The goal here is a new you. And... Um, you can't hold on to your old life and get something completely new. That's a very, very good point. Ooh, that was heavy. That was a lot. Listen, I'm glad that you talked about this, John, because I say it a lot um, when it comes to um, money and couples. And, you know, here on The Ramsey Show, we say all the time, like, combine your money. Your money's got to be combined. And everybody's... Uh, marriage situation is different obviously in a healthy relationship combining finances should should be second nature for some people it's not and if it's not you have to work towards that but there are really really real situations that people are encountering where both people in the relationship are not healthy and so because of that um the idea of combining finances with someone who has displayed um addictions or uh financial Dishonesty. infidelity yeah, yes yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like lack okay of control. lack of control i need people to understand there is those points where you do draw that line and say hey right now in this season and i love that you kind of gave it a 90 to 120 days deal now her husband was willing to go to rehab mm -hmm. what about somebody who's like listen my spouse is just not there yet then you have to take, you, you have to take, she's got four kids. She's got four kids. Right. I'm going to put my money in my safe. own account and we're not splitting and I'm going to figure that out. Mm -hmm. And that's just, that's just, you got to survive. Yeah. Right. It's, you got to survive. It, it, it goes back to, we tell people to be gazelle intense. That's not a way of life long-term. That mm -hmm. is a right now because your family is at such risk that we want you to sprint. Don't go out to eat. Don't anything, don't do anything of joyful. Just get out of debt. Very similar. This isn't long-term. This isn't going to be good for your marriage long-term. This is about you surviving. Right. And that person keeps taking your money out of your account and your kids are at risk. You're at risk. I'm going to have my own account, my own money, my own stuff until my, my, my partner's safe and is well, and then we can build something together. Such good advice. You're listening to The Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. 
We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Visit Blinds.com to get up to 45% off. That's Blinds.com. Rules and restrictions may apply. You're listening to The Ramsey Show. I'm Jade Warshaw. This is John Deloney. Thanks for hanging out with us. If you want us to take your take your call, give us a call. The number is 888-825-5225, and we will chop it up with you. Let's go directly to the phone lines where we've got Catherine in Knoxville, Tennessee. What's going on, Catherine? Hi, I'm doing well. How are you? We're doing great. All right, so my question for you guys is, my husband and I recently moved to Tennessee, um, and we just had our first baby in October. Nice. And we have some debt. A majority of it is student loans. Okay. Um, we owe, well, he owes um, $58,000 for a student loan. 58? Yes, okay. five eight. <laughs> you said that very strategically. And Y'all both own, right? Yes. Yeah. Y'all both own. Yes, we we both own it because there you we're go. married. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What else you got? Uh, so we also have a little over twenty one thousand dollars. I guess it would be considered consumer debt. I hope I'm saying that right. Okay. What so is like it? Like our cars. Um, I owe a little over five thousand dollars on my car. Okay. Um, he owes a little over $6,000 on his. Uh, I have a loan with his mother, um, so there's zero interest in that for about thirty three. Oh, there's interest. Oh, there's interest, Tiffany. <laughs> there's interest, all right. <laughs> That's the highest interest loan you can have, Catherine. <laughs> How much is that um, loan? Uh, $3,300. Okay, we're paying that off. It might Lickety as well be $3.3 million. <laughs> And then four thousand um, dollars for the birth of my child. Okay. And two thousand dollars in credit card debt. So I believe that equals right around around twenty one thousand or so. Okay, I'm with it. All and right. We have twenty eight thousand dollars in our savings. Well, oh, fantastic. Okay. Hey, so hold on, Jade. Before you go in, can I just say one thing, Catherine? I'm going to turn you over to Jade because she's the expert here. I really want. How long have you, how long have you and your husband been married? We just had our first year anniversary in September. We've been together for five years. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, so I'll give you a, a little bit of a pass until the end of the day. Okay? <laughs> okay. I want you and your husband after this phone call to be highly intentional about using the word "ours" and "we." Okay. Not his, mine, hers. This is ours. It's called a vocab yep. rehab. Oh, I like that. Yes, vocab yes. rehab. And here's the, the language here matters because resentment builds out of the they did this. Okay. When we did this, then we're going to solve it. Cool. But yes, resentment yes. is he did this to me. Yes. Yes. He took all these student loans out, even though he's got a job and he's making a bunch of money. He took all these loans out and it makes me scared and right instead of, yeah. nope, I married him. I love him. We, we made a human together and we owe this money. We are going to pay this off. See the difference? Absolutely. Totally. Okay. All right. Same team. One team, one dream. Oh, Todd. There you go. All right. Here we go. <laughs> okay. So you have some money in savings, which is great. 28000 Let's spend it. Like, let's spend it paying off some of this debt. Specifically, mama-in-law, we're going to get that off today. the... Today. Today. So here's what I want you to do today. And then 
I'm going to tell you what I'd like for you to do. Then I want you to tell me your objections to it and then I'll smooth it out for you. Number one, we're listing the debts from smallest to largest. That's called a debt snowball. Okay. Uh, you list them from smallest to largest and you make minimum payments on everything. But with extra money, you put it towards the smallest debt. And in this case, you have lots of extra money lying around called savings because yeah. uh, the way we teach the first step in getting your finances together is to just put $1,000 aside. We call that baby step one. And you've got that. And then the next step is to pay off your debt using the debt snowball method, which we're about to do right here. So if we keep $1,000 aside, that leaves you with 27000 that you can knock out this debt. And you basically listed it for me, um, largest to smallest. So I've got it written here, smallest to largest. So let's pay off okay. that credit card that's 2000 This is what you're doing like today. Paying off that credit card that's 2000 Then you're going to come in here and you're going to pay off mom in law, which is 3300 yep. Then after that, you're going to come over and pay that deductible and get it, clear that out. And you're done with baby. And then you can clear out these cars, pay off both cars. That's crazy. How much peace does yep. that give you? It gives me peace, but I'm not going to lie. I get worried about only having a thousand dollars with a new baby. I just, I, I get, I have a lot of fear when it comes to finances. I grew up very poor and my husband didn't necessarily grow up the same way. So he doesn't have any anxiety when it comes to like, finances. And I'm like a total worry wart. Do you know so what's scarier worry, though? Like, what if something comes up? And that's, that's what I'm trying to help you with. If something comes up and you have no debt, then nothing's popping, like nothing's coming up. But if something comes up and you have lots of debt, then you're screwed. Because here's the thing, yeah. something comes up, let's, let's, let's assume the worst because you're like, oh, we have a baby. Yeah. What's the worst that could happen? You lose your jobs. Yeah. $28,000 is not going to go very far when you've got no. credit cards, a deductible, mom to pay back, two cars that you're paying. That's called stress. <laughs> but the moment that you pay off that debt, think about how much money is going to be back in your hands because you're not making payments. You're going to stack up $28,000 lickety split. And then when the big bad wolf comes to blow your house down, you're going to have no debt and $28,000. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a short term, this is you kind of having that short term freak out just to get your, yes. your cards in order. You should, you should feel yeah. nervous. Yeah. It's a thousand bucks. Okay. The, 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 the space between you and calamity is very, very thin. Yeah. It's yeah. supposed to feel that way. That's the fire that you're going to run through the rest of this student loan mess with and be done forever. Okay. So that you're okay. free. Yeah. Now, now I, I grew I up without a I... lot either. Okay. Okay. My dad worked really hard and real, real, real hard and things were really tight. And for yeah. a season, I put security in two things, stuff and it, what I would call a pretend pocket of money. And that's mm -hmm. what you've done. Yeah. You got, a, you got a house that you didn't have growing up. You got a husband with a job that you didn't have growing up. You got two yeah. cars you didn't have growing up. And you've got this magical little pot of money. That's that feels like it's yours. It is not yours. You've already spent it. You spent it on a baby. You spent it on two cars. It's not yours. Just go ahead and mm -hmm. give it away. It's fake. Yeah, you're right. Now, what I'm going to tell you is peace on the other side. When you don't owe anybody anything and nobody can take anything from you. Yeah, that's a piece that those who struggled with with less than growing up, they don't understand it until they get there, dude. And it's magic. Totally. How much do you, do, do you and your husband make together? So I stay at home with our son and he brings and he works full time and he makes about $55,000 Okay. a year. Cool. And are you guys living on a budget? Yes. So we just did our budget this month um, and we're really trying to buckle down on it. We're not big spenders on, we don't do a lot of extras. I think the most where our, if we are spending is I tend to food hoard a little bit. Me so too. Okay. Me too. Me too. Same I, team. I buy a, more than what we need in groceries. Okay. So here's the thing. Uh, you know, you've got the money to clear out all these little ankle biter debts and you've even got, you know, you'll have three or 4,000, uh, 5,000 or so that you can throw onto the student loan, but where it's really going to require you buckling down and jumping into that mindset that John just talked about is when it comes to the student loan, because the student loan is 50, you know, by the time you pay down a little of it, it's going to be 55 and you earn 55. So yeah. yeah. What, what kind of degree did he get costing the so same? 
has his degree in early childhood education, his bachelor's. Is he a teacher? He doesn't know. <laughs> okay. Um, he actually works for um, a zoo. Okay. Here's the deal. <laughs> um, he's going to have to get a second and probably a third job making an additional 25 grand a year. Mm-hmm. And you might need to so pick up some work that was, you can do at home. That's what I was going to bring up. So he also is a licensed tattoo artist. So okay. he was working two jobs when we lived back in Connecticut. And now he is looking to get licensed in Tennessee and also work Look, he needs whatever he can do to bring in some money, I always say... Do whatever you can. And that includes you, too. He's not the only one that can work extra. You've got some time in your day where you can pick up some extra cash. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, folks, you know that sinking feeling when you make an offer on a house you love and then you hear there's another offer? You need the Churchill Mortgage Home Buyer Edge. Super fast pre approval and a secured interest rate. Plus, a $5,000 seller guarantee gives your offer the best chance of being accepted. The Home Buyer Edge from Churchill gives you an advantage over those other guys. Go to churchillmortgage.com today to learn more. listening to The Ramsey Show. I am Jade Warshaw, your host, joined by Dr. John Deloney, your other host, author of Building a Non-Anxious Life. John, such a great book, one of my favorites. And uh, hey, if you love listening to The Ramsey Show, do us a favor and consider uh, liking it, subscribing it, and definitely sharing it, uh, whatever platform you like uh, listening to the show, whether it's YouTube, whether it's on your favorite podcast app, just share it with somebody. When you do that, it helps us in so many ways. It boosts us up in the algorithms. And so a lot of other people are able to see uh, the shows there as well. So do that for us. It's absolutely free. And we would be oh so grateful and oh so appreciative of you for doing that. So like, share, subscribe. That is the ask. In the meantime, let's go to the phone lines. We got Lainey in South Bend, Indiana. What's going on? Hi. Um, so my husband and I, we make about 55 um, at the end of the year. Okay. And we're on baby step six, um, but we're just trying to figure out what we can do to cut expenses or do something in order to pay off our house quicker. We just bought it in 2022. And so we're kind of on fire to pay it off, but we have two kids and then another one on the way. How much is the mortgage? What do you owe? Mortgage um, with everything included, like uh, interest and everything like that is um, like 12.5. Okay. What do you, what's the payoff? Uh, when, when do we pay it off? Or yeah, what do you owe? wanting to pay it off. What, what do you owe on it? Like, what do you owe on the Oh, 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 on the sorry. Loan? We owe like 142, I want to say. Cool, cool, cool. So w- what we have found is that when people walk through the baby steps, most people are able to pay off their mortgage within seven to 10 years is what we find. Um, that's if they've, you know, walked our steps, they're on that 15 year fixed rate mortgage, they're going through it. So it's safe to assume that that's probably going to be you. And in that case, it looks a lot like intentionality, a lot more so than it looks like, okay, we're getting, you know, super intense. Gazelle intense is the phrase we use here. Um, you don't necessarily have to be like that on baby step six. So you and your husband really need to sit down and decide, okay, what are we willing to do here? Is it, you know, what are we willing to sacrifice in order to find those extra payments and what are we shooting for are we looking to double double it are we looking to triple it like have you guys said what it is that you're looking to do yeah so we wanted to be debt free before i turned 30 so i turned 30 um january of uh 2030 so um but we do (laughs) we got a 30-year mortgage so that's where kind of the funkiness comes on (laughs) is that with 55 grand and you know it's 
hundred dollar mortgage. Hey, why'd you get a thirty year? I'm I'm a, I'm gonna put you on the fire smart. for a minute because you've been <laughs> walking we the steps. Smart. <laughs> yeah, I know we weren't smart. Hey, so we we, well, we we honestly honestly the reality is we bought a house we absolutely fell in love with. We knew we wanted mm, a lot of kids. We're going to have three kids under the age of three, mm-hmm. and we bought a house that we couldn't afford, so we did a 30. <laughs> Listen, Lainey, good for you for just going ahead and calling that out, because yeah. so many people face that, and they act like they had no choice in the matter, and I love that you just owned it and said, hey, we made a choice that wasn't the best choice, and we did it out of emotion. Um, so right. many people can relate to that. Now you're in it, so we do need to come up with a plan to get this paid off in the next six to seven years if you want to do it you know, in the time frame that you said, Correct. Right. Yep. What, what does your husband do for a living? He's a teacher in the public schools. Okay. That actually makes me happy. Here's why. Um, he can work in the evenings and on Saturdays and Sundays and in all summer. Right. And it's not right. going to be fun. Um, I, 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 like Jade, we teach people, take your time in baby step six, slowly begin to love your life a little bit. You're not running for your life. I also will say in my private life, in my personal life, I hate with all my guts. I can't breathe when I owe somebody money. It's a, it's a, it's a problem from my childhood. And right. so my wife and I sat down and said, okay, we can't go, we can't go gazelle intense, but we're going to go over the top. Mm. What would that mean? What would we have to, and we didn't go on vacations and we didn't buy furniture. We did, we didn't do a lot of stuff. We drove the same used cars. I remember Dave looking at my truck and being like, Hey, I know what I pay you. And it was like, I know, man, I'm, I'm getting done with this stuff. And so it's just a matter of making a plan and saying, okay, if we want to be done in three years or four years, how much money would we have to make? It's just a math problem. And then one or both of y'all has to go earn that money. Mm Mm-hmm. And right. I wish it was more complicated than that. It's just not. Well, just putting it into real numbers, partially real numbers, because I'm not using a mortgage calculator. I'm just off the top of my head. If your more, if your loan is 142,000, and you split that up, you said you want to have it done by that birthday. That's six years. If you split that up, you've right. got to be paying at least twenty four thousand dollars a year on this. Yeah. And so you're making fifty five. So right off the bat, you know, if nothing changes, ain't gonna make it. it we ain't gonna make it because living on twenty five thousand. Right. Listen, I don't know if it's possible with with the family you have. Right. I don't think that it is. So to John's point, somebody or both of you guys are gonna have to figure out a way to bring more money into the household. Um, have you guys had real conversations about that? We have. The one hard thing is that you know we will have three kids under three at the end of October, and mm-hmm. so. Just thinking about like me starting a job just to leave it for multiple months to, you know, have a newborn again. And then he absolutely, absolutely, absolutely loves his job. And these are the things, listen, I'm not taking any of that away from you. But what I am saying is you called in here and said, I want to pay off this mortgage <laughs> yeah. in the next six to seven years. No, yeah. So I want the honest <laughs> well, part. Well, what I'm trying to, what I want to lay out for you is you may not be able to do all of that. It, but what you do get to right. decide is what you do get to do. You might not get to pay off the mortgage in seven years, but you might get to stay at home with three kids under three. Or you may have three kids under three and you take a neighbor's kid. And for right. an extra 500 bucks a month or whatever, $8,000 a month, whatever childcare costs these days. Um, right. And I want you to keep in mind, in two years, you're going to have three kids five and under. Right. And then a year after that, you're going to have three kids six and under. And it may be that three years, th- the kids six and under, and you don't owe anybody any money because y'all just, just bit down on your mouthpiece and went in swinging. Mm-hmm. And your husband worked he got done teaching and then he delivered pe- he delivered pizzas or delivered Uber. And then on Saturdays and Sundays mm-hmm. he drove and he missed his kids, but he had a long game in mind. Or or you extend your timeline and That's you're right. like, listen, we're gonna pay this thing off in ten years. And right. you don't sacrifice to that extent because if you choose to go that route, you can, but you really don't need to. Like I, I can't right. stress that enough. Yeah, Go ahead. Right. Go ahead. I was going to say, I just can't stress that enough. You guys have worked hard to get to baby step six. I don't know what your debt payoff journey was, but here you are. And if you want to go pedal to the metal, you want to go balls to the wall, that's fine. But I don't want you to hear Mm -hmm. me say that you have to do that in this phase because. Well, and like right now we're, 
we're on baby step six and we're still only spending like $250 on groceries. Listen, I need y'all to live a little. Enjoy your life too. Loosen up the purse strings, mama. Yeah. At least go on a date every once in a while. (laughs) You know, you've got, your income is uh, on the tougher side for the size that your family is going to be. I'm not going to lie about that. And so you do have to be very meticulous about your budget, but I don't want you to feel like, and I'm not discarding what you said, John. If you guys decide, hey, we're going to put our heads together and we're oh, going to work, 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 Oh, that's just for my crazy family. That's not for everybody. That's not for yeah. everybody. If you guys decide that, I'm not mad. I'm surely not mad at you, but I really <laughs> want to give you permission to go, okay, we made a mistake with this mortgage. That wasn't right. Let's at least, let's a, at least agree to pay this like a 15 year. Right. Yeah. And well, I feel and like that's, that's meeting right in the now. middle. Yeah. That's the goal right now is to pay it off like a 15, but then- well, the goal was to pay it off like a 15, but then actually pay it off like a five. <laughs> cool. But now okay. It's just a math more problem. Realistic. Listen. But yeah. But now I feel like I'm trying to be more realistic and like, okay, maybe we do just need to stick at the 15. Absolutely. And just be happy with the life that we're. Y'all are choosing. Loving. Yeah. You can do, yeah. you can do what you want to do. Um, when it comes to that, start with the 15 year as start with paying it like a 15 year see how it feels and then if you feel a little better listen we'll try to pay it like a 10 year see how that feels and then if you feel so inclined you can push the pedal to the metal a little bit more but again it's about being intentional not necessarily about being intense in baby step six this is the ramsey show of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create amazing relationships. I am your host, Jake Warshaw, joined by your other host, Dr. John Deloney. We're going to be taking your calls for the next couple of hours, so give us a call. The number is 888-825-5225. We'd be happy to chop it up with you. Um, One of my favorite things about this show is it's caller driven. So people are calling in all the time, John, telling us really their deepest and darkest secrets because what I always find so interesting is people have a very hard time talking about money with their family, their friends, even their spouses, but they'll call into this show and tell like two knuckleheads like us, their deepest, darkest money secrets, the mistakes that they've made with money. And we're here for it. Probably they feel comfortable talking about that, John, because we've made all the mistakes that you could possibly make with money. Like we've done it too. And so it's like, you're among friends uh, who have done stupid things and had to pay the cost for it with their money. And around here, we call that stupid tax. Like if you've ever done something that's just like, oh, what was I thinking? And now you have to pay the piper, so to speak. We call that stupid tax. And uh, we want to hear that from you. Matter of fact, if you have some stupid tax that you would like to share with us, you can always email us. The email is ask at RamseySolutions.com and you can put stupid tax in the subject. But of course, we have to share some of ours, right, John? What's your favorite one? I have, the list is extensive. And so there's many to choose I know, from. I know, off the air, I heard her on the phone with their husband and they were just like, <laughs> well, this one and this one Rattling time, this one off. time. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> um... Probably the one that there's two that stands out. Probably the one is uh, my husband. When I met him, he had a a Jeep. Um, What's the what's not Liberty, not Wrangler. Cherokee. Cherokee. Thank you. And he had finally paid it off and like made the final payment. And he was like, yes, I finally paid off my Jeep. And like within weeks, we were at the car dealership to get a brand new Hummer H3 (laughs) because we were like, yes, now we have a down payment to get loans again and i think about that to this day of like what were we thinking <laughs> we could have entered marriage and had a paid for a car and been but instead we got a h3 hummer uh, and paid 435 dollars a month for it <laughs> it wasn't even Stupid a cool tax. car hey dude i i got out of college i remember i had seventeen thousand five hundred dollars in student loans which back then was a million dollars now would be a dream right <laughs> and 
I drove an 88 Tercel Easy Hatchback. My friends called it the roller skate. And I looked like Fred Flintstone. It was so little. My body was so folded up in that thing. And the week I graduated, I went to a dealership and got the biggest, stupidest Texas compensation truck I could find. Wow. And it cost more than my student loan. So with one stroke of the pen, I doubled my debt load. And I thought I won. I, <laughs> I was like, how do you like... How do you like them apples, like America? Them I yeah. got a truck that I can't afford. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it was the stupidest. I just, oh, it was so embarrassing. How long did it take before you were like, I can't? Or I, like, I, I got to pay this off? within 18 months. I couldn't breathe. It was so expensive. It was my buddy's dad, um, Randy Fox. He passed away a few years ago. Randy was an accountant. And I remember I drove it over to show him how cool it was. And he just looked at me and goes, this is stupid. Like, and he's a math guy. And yeah. just the way he looked at us, like, oh, no, what have I done? Oh, but. stupid tax. I love it. Okay. In that same realm, uh, I hate to say this, John, but I think we've all done the rooms to go, you know, no payments until, you know, the year 20, 2030 or whatever. And you're like, all right. And in your mind, in that moment, you're like, that year will never come <laughs> because it's like 15 years later. Like you're like, this year can never That's a come problem for future Jade. We get it right now. We get it right now. And I think we bought the ugliest furniture that you could buy. It was all dark brown. And it all matched. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> you get the bed frame and the foot frame and the, the the matching side tables and the, you know, the dresser. And it all looks exactly the same, like no character. And uh, I don't know what we paid for it, but I know that they had said, you know, no payments until, you know, you're old and gray. We won. And somehow those payments came due. And I was like, oh, crap. I didn't have that stupid text. I had probably another segment called Stupid Marriage idiot uh oh, it was after my second book went number one and we we're having dinner at the house and my wife said this is <laughs> last year she's like hey uh we've had a good couple of years and i was like yep <laughs> could we get rid of the uh, the headboard that you bought off craigslist and spray painted 15 years ago and i was like it works great and she's like what if we what if we bought real furniture <laughs> so I, we got funny. our first bed and I'm that is about so it. funny, but you did it the right way. Did, hey, you know what? We, we waited 20 years. So if I'm you such have... a catch, ladies. I'm a catch. <laughs> Listen, that's better than the stupid tax. If you have stupid tax stories, be sure uh... to let us know. Ask at RamseySolutions.com. Put stupid tax in the subject. We want to hear about those and talk about them on the show. Let's go to Trevor. He's in Savannah, Georgia. Trevor, you're on the line. Hello. Excited to talk to you all. You too. What's going on? Um, so I got a question. Um, I'll just lay out some facts for you. That way you kind of know on a basis of where I come from, and uh, then I'll shoot the question. So I am 25. Uh, I have no debt right now. Um, I bought all my toys with cash, paid for all of them. I'm not married. Um, I make 80000 a year. Uh, about I'm commission-based, so somewhere around there. Okay. Anyway, um, I am looking... My next purchase would be a house. Um, I know that Dave always says marry the house, not the interest rate. So my question is, uh, I know that y'all say 20% down. Would you be okay or would it be okay to get something with closer to like maybe 10 or 12% down? That way I can go ahead and start paying a mortgage on the house. Um, or should I wait, you know, two or three more years or so and save up the whole 20% and then buy by then. If you can afford it and it's less than 25 25% or less of your take home pay on a 15 year fixed rate, I'd probably go ahead and do it. Okay. I mean, cool. um I got The range is between 5 and 20%. If you can get to 20, that's great. I don't know that I would delay it by 3 years to get there. Yeah, and it may not take that long. I mean, I I'm, I'm pretty good at saving. Um I do have a $1000 like emergency fee and then a 3 to 6 months emergency fund set up so you know if i bought and the air condition went out or whatever i'm, I'm covered there um okay cool so what are you um, looking at well, that's a pretty straightforward uh so where i live um i live right around savannah um somewhere around the three hundred thousand range okay and what percentage of your take home is that going to end up being um it'd probably be about 1500 a month or so i make about 45 so that would be uh, you know, right around maybe twenty seven hundred, something like that. Twenty or twenty seven percent, maybe. 
thirty percent, something like that. I'd want to listen. I'm not trying to split hairs, but try to get it to twenty five if you can. Yeah. You know, I mean, I 26, 20, 26, time. 27, I'm not too mad at. But if you know you're upwards of 30, I would I would hold back because unless you see your income going up to cover that 5% in the foreseeable future, listen, that 5%, you feel it. And you're going to feel it in other areas of your budget, whether it be your spending budget, your fund money, it's going to shake out in some somewhere down the line, especially because you're in sales and you're on commission. I really want to make sure you meet those parameters. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey guys, Ramsey Solutions started small and grew fast. Because of that rapid growth, there were times when our systems slowed us down. That's why we switched to NetSuite. It works for us and it'll help your business too. Whether you're starting on a card table like I did or you're well on your way to becoming a multi-million dollar company, NetSuite can scale with you and help you communicate and plan better. Because you know your day-to-day up and down and sideways, but accounting, analytics, and supply chain are on another level. So maybe you're just not tech savvy. That can be okay. NetSuite will help at your speed and whatever your situation. More than 37,000 companies use NetSuite to know their numbers and their business better. So check out NetSuite today and find out how they can help you become the business you want to be five or 30 years from now. And right now, you can download NetSuite's free KPI checklist designed to give you consistently excellent performance at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. to the Ramsey Show. I'm your host, Jade Warshaw. Your other host is Dr. John Deloney. We are taking your calls all hour long. Honestly, for the next couple hours, we'll talk about your life, your money, your relationships, whatever it is. You can give us a call. The number is 888-825-5225. We got Tiffany in Chat Town. What's going on, Tiffany from Chattanooga? <laughs> Chattanooga, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We do call it chat time. I know, I know. I'm glad. I'm glad I got a reaction from you. <laughs> I've never heard that yes. in my life. What, John? Everyone in this no. room is now dumber for. I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. Chat town. Chat town. Chat town. How's it going, guys? We're doing good. <laughs> All right. So my question is now. I have been married. I'm 42. I've been married for 23 years. Nice. Um, my husband and I, yeah, we got married really young. My best friend in the whole entire world. So if he is listening, I am not dogging you. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, this is going to be <laughs> awesome. The caveat. What's going on? <laughs> my question is, so we are um, preparing my youngest, our, our, our youngest, to um, go on and and move out. She's about to graduate. She's got a plan. We're working on that. So this is literally our first time being by ourselves. We got married with a kid, so we have never been by ourselves. So I'm trying to figure out, I would like to be financially free so we can have more time and all that, but he is not on the same page with me on what to do with our money. So I'm trying to figure out how to convince him to start your guys' program. Ah, Interesting. Um, Okay, so just making sure this question is not really about the child going off to school. This is about you wanting to live your best life once your kids are out of the house. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So give me a picture of what life looks like now financially. I mean, are you guys combining the money? Are you on a budget? Tell me more. Okay, so literally just started listening to you guys. I binge mom at work. Don't tell anybody. Tell um, everybody. So I just started listening. <laughs> Don't tell my boss. 
Um, but I just started listening to you guys. And so we really haven't started any of the program whatsoever. Okay. Um, my husband is, um, he has owns his own business. So that kind of money is separated, but I have access, like we have access to each of our accounts, both of us, but his money for his business is separated. What about the money that he pays himself in payroll? Does that go into a combined account or does that stay on his side? No, no, it's. It just stays on his side, but I can okay. like, I can pull money. I mean, we don't, we don't separate like that. It's just that kind of money. is just in a different account. Okay. So I would say that you guys probably, it, it sounds like the way it is, you probably could combine finances for real, for real. And it'd be pretty painless because yeah. by definition, I don't really feel like you're combined right now, even though it seems like there's kind of a, a, a good amount of openness. I'd like for it to be like, there's no veil. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just one account um, or one or two accounts that you guys are both on. It's not your account over here and his account over there, but you can kind of creep over there if you want to. So right. that that would probably the, be the first step is I'd sit down tonight and say, you know, Bob, I love you. And I think that I'd love to start really combining our money. I know that we have access into each other's accounts, but I would love if we just had it in one place and we can see it together. And while I'm on this subject, I listened to some crazy folks on the radio and they said that we should get a budget and I'd love to start budgeting with you and kind of just let him know what's on your heart and let him know that you're really excited about this. And more than that, tell him why you're excited about it. And I think that's going to be a good introduction into the conversation. Cause if somebody comes to me, John, and says, I want you to be a bigger part of my life. And financially, I'd love if we could share money together and I can share mine with you and you can share yours with me. And I'd love if we could sit down and like plan our month together and like all the fun things that we want to do with money and what we want to accomplish. For me, that's a love language. Like that's a compliment. Now, I don't know your husband. I called him Bob. What's his name? (laughs) His name is Nick. Okay. I don't know, you know, what, what gets Nick's wheels turning, but you know, put it in a way that is going to be appealing to him as well. So I... I, I'm, I'm going to overly gender this, and so uh, everybody be nice to me in the, inter- in the internets, on the internets. Um, I hear often a wife, say, a women saying, I would love to be a part of your life, coming at it from the joy angle. Mm-hmm. How can... How can I be... How can we do more of this thing called marriage together? Mm-hmm. I often hear men respond in that way to, I've already got this figured out, I'm fine. They want to be lone wolves. That's right. And so where, where I've seen women be successful, wives be successful, Tiffany, is <coughs> saying, hey, our youngest is leaving the house. I want to go spend a half day together and dream about what could be. And when he says, well, you know, I've been really busy, the, the next answer is, because I'm scared to death to continue living like we are right now. And that has a way of stopping people in their tracks because no man, no husband worth one ounce of salt wants his wife scared. That's a good point. In her own home. Right. And so there's something about saying, I I feel out of control. I feel like we don't know where we're going. I feel like we're going to wake up in 10 years and we're going to be in this exact spot. And I don't want that. Will you join me? Yeah, that's kind of because I like laid out everything already. I have a whiteboard. I have all of our amounts out Mm -hmm. um, of what we owe and everything like that. And then just the other day, like this is when it hit me that he was just not on the same page. He said, I want to sell the trailer. And when I sell the trailer, I want to put it into some stock. And I was like, I thought we were paying bills. So let me ask you. Well, I, yeah. Foundationally, who changed? Did you change? Or have you always, like, did you guys start out on a a path together that is like, we um, believe in stocks and we believe in debt and we believe in, or have you always kind of been like, I don't know how I feel about this and just not talked about it? Like, I I do want to know a little bit more of that because there is something in a relationship where it's like, wait a minute, I thought we were doing this together. And then one person truly like up and changes and doesn't want to Yeah, so, um... I don't think either one of us changed. I think at this point, like I said, we got married really young Mm -hmm. and um, we had financial struggle our whole entire life. This is the first time that I felt, um, though, yes, I have debt and I know you 
will disagree, but this is the first time I felt like we could actually make a step forward uh-huh. um, in in our financial freedom, um, where before we were always just drowning. Just trying and to so, stay, yeah. Yeah, just trying to survive. So, here, so, so Tiffany, like, here's what you've had. Yeah. You've had a husband that's been ashamed to look his wife in the eyes for most of your marriage. Because he's yeah. a small business owner that hasn't been able to create the world that he wanted to create. And he knew right. one one play. He had one tool in his toolkit, and that was hit the gas even harder. And don't take your foot off. And right. y'all have scratched and clawed, and he's got there. And now he's going to try to catch it up by, by putting it all on red seven, which is playing stocks. Right. Fair? Yeah. Yeah. And this is when you sit down and say, I'm scared to death. Right. So right. then let's look at, uh, you said you have it all whiteboarded out. Mm-hmm. What? Tell me about what's on the whiteboard. I want to know the numbers real quick. I want to know, give me in a nutshell, how much debt you have to pay off. You don't have to list it all out because we don't have a ton of time, but I want to know what you guys earn. Yeah. Okay. So, um, we bring in about a hundred thousand. Okay. About seventy thousand is mine, and then the rest is his. Um, being a small business owner, he, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's different, but that's, that's about right. it. And okay. then we um, owe about thirty-eight thousand dollars in in debt minus the mortgage, so it does not include the mortgage. And when you guys sell this trailer, what do you think it'll bring realistically? Or is that thirty-eight k mm. the trailer? No, 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 no! It's not the trailer. It's um, we own the trailer. The trailer will probably bring in, I think, maybe five thousand. Okay, so it's basically, what you're trying to get him to see is that that money could be better spent, and you guys really aren't far away from freedom. You know, you pay off, you sell that trailer, you got thirty, you know, thirty-three thousand dollars to pay off with a hundred thousand dollar income. You can pay that off lickety split. Save yourselves up three to six m- months of expenses, and you truly are home free. It's not like you guys have this seven-year path in front of you. This can get cleaned up in a year or less. Especially right? if he goes and makes some more money. Exactly. So have a, have a sit down, talk with him, talk about how you feel. Change this thing. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey guys, you know this, but I'll say it anyway. College is freaking expensive, and student loans are out of control. The average private student loan debt in 2023 was $55,000. So if you're in over your head with private student loan debt, don't beat yourself up. Look, we've all made mistakes with money in the past. What matters is doing something about it now. So if you're in distress with private student loans, that's private, not federal student loans, call Y-Refi. Y-Refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. To learn more about this custom refinancing option, call 844-2-RAMSEY or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey. You're listening to The Ramsey Show. John Deloney, to my right. I have an article on my desk that is honestly pretty crazy. Um, it was an email before it was, you know, before it was sitting here on the desk. And I looked at the email uh, earlier today and it said, garbage deals. Dealership puts customers in cars with $3,000 a month car payments. That's wickety, wickety, wickety whack. Like, that's crazy. That's nuts. Okay, it says, a New York Fed survey published earlier this week indicated that in the fourth quarter of 2023, auto loan delinquencies reached levels not seen since right after the Great Recession more than a decade ago. 
So we're hitting historical numbers here. It says delinquency transaction rates have pushed past pre-pandemic levels. The house- All right, and we remember this, though. We remember during during the pandemic, people were buying used cars. Yes. On like 72-month notes that were like, I have a buddy, and if you ask him, he's one of my oldest friends. Like, what do you do for a living? He says, I make bad car loans. <laughs> and even he said... Dude, these loans I are like people are asking for are absolute madness. I am just I I'm I'm really shocked. And they're coming um, home to roost now, but then it's getting worse. It's getting worse, man. Wow. It says an Edmund report from last year showed the percentage of drivers with plus one thousand dollar monthly payments jumped to an all time high. The reason is that the average amount financed for a new vehicle is around forty thousand dollars. Folks are putting $40,000 cars. That's the average. Hold on. 17% of Americans. Yeah. That's crazy. Have a $1,000 monthly car payment. Yeah. When, listen. John, Golly. Look, John, a while back. we, we <laughs> That's insane. I, and that's for one car. $1,000. That's just one car. Most, most households are a two-car household. Okay. That's, <laughs> ah, that is groceries. It's a lot. And eating out or a car that at the most, at the most, you drive for what, two hours? Maybe. And it sits in your driveway okay. or your garage or your parking lot where you work. The par- the parking garage. Folks can't even see it because it's dark in there. And that's they're a thousand dollars. I I should have read this more closely before I looked at this. Yeah, it's nuts. So he says this episode is sponsored by Preparation H because I got the hemorrhoids, James. A thousand dollars. All right, it gets worse. It's it it goes down. Listen, he says uh, this leads us to two posts that were made by uh, a certain Instagram handle it says they shared what appeared to be an auto dealer sharing several images online of new customers financing vehicles with payments that are as much as monthly mortgage payments so in other words these people are in this instagram post and they're excited about the fact like you know god came through when i got me my deal you know and (laughs) it's always that too like yes uh, man god heard my prayer yeah it was a blessing and now i have a two thousand five hundred and fifty dollar monthly payment it says one person purchased a 2023 it's on the screen one person purchased a 2023 tahoe with a two thousand five hundred and fifty dollar a month payment on an 84 month term that's almost a decade that's a depreciating asset it will be oh my god another person that was just one guy another person bought a 2023 sierra oh my gosh 2500 denali oh with a $3,000 a month payment. And he was locked in to a 96 month. Look, there's the prayer hands. Why do they gotta put the, listen, listen. And look me in my eye. God didn't have nothing to do with that. You did that. That is not a blessing. Hey, can we just say, Tahoe? I would love to have Tahoe. Uh, A a, a brand new Sierra Denali. I love that car. And I can't imagine signing up for a 96 month term. And here's the thing, John. A depreciating asset. I can't even get into the people that would sign for this, like the guys in the in the photos or whoever. Their their level of financial literacy is clearly very very low. Um, and they need shows like the Ramsey Show. Yeah. But whoever sold them this, I have questions about your integrity and who you are as a person. And you need King Coleman because you are not doing work that matters. You're doing work, <laughs> work that causes pain. I mean, this is horrible. Um, just because you can get something doesn't mean you can, you should get it. That's really the lesson here. Just because you can get it doesn't mean it's good. Doesn't mean uh, it was a blessing. It makes, it makes me think of that verse and all you're getting, get understanding and get wisdom. This is not wise. And just going out to get things because you can get it, because you can purchase. And on the other side, just making the sale because you can make it and because they're willing to sign each of those, there's responsibility on both sides of that scale. Uh, the consumer has a responsibility and the the person selling on the other end has a responsibility to society to do better. <laughs> to society. Okay? It's, a, it's a greater good. I, I, $3,000 a month. Let's do some math. So the guy who's 
doing $3,000 a month on a 96 year term. Uh, that let's do a little bit of uh, calculation here and see what that equivalates to over time. If he invested that money, I'm, I'm sick. I'm sick. It's $400,000. If he invested that money over the same term, instead of It'd be paying 400 it, grand, $400,000. So he's going to be sitting on a truck that's worth about 20 to 25% of what he bought it for in 96 months versus the the other side of that. Yeah. If for eight years, and here's what I did for people checking my math. I did 0% start, like he has no money to start. I did that he's investing it for eight years at an 8% return. 8% is fine, whatever. It's not that great. Compounding monthly, so he's paying $3,000 in a month. And yeah, $400,000 in, in that range. Wow. That's what he's giving up. To be able to post on Instagram and say, look at the car I got. I got my Sierra 2500 Denali. That's crazy. Congratulations, man. You just you just tied a boat anchor around your leg and yeah. you just jumped off the bridge, man. And it's just going down because we know new cars, they take that first hit. They you, they lose 40 to 60% of their value in those first three to four years. is critical. They lose it so quickly. And instead of that, he's you know, he's but he's got his car, though. I, I, I'm telling you, man, the thousand dollars tripped me out. This, th these make me sick to my stomach. Um, yeah, you can't. <sighs> Here's what I, people I, said. Let's hear what other people said on Twitter. This is what people responded. They said two hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars for a truck that will depreciate in one fifth to one fifth of that long before it's paid off. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know where he got the two thousand eighty-eight. I don't know where he got that dollar amount from. It's going to be more than that. This guy said, dude could be almost a third of the way through a 30 year mortgage on an expensive house when he pays off his truck. It is a mortgage. $400,000 is what he's sacrificing. Yeah. And can, here's the part that's making me sick to my stomach is people watch TV and they watch TikTok and they watch Instagram and they have this vision and maybe they know one guy at their church or one guy at their office or two guys at their office. And they know that that person's rich, whatever rich means, mm -hmm. and that that person who's rich has car X, Y, or Z. Mm -hmm. And what they don't know is behind closed doors, the average millionaire, the number one car driven by millionaires is a, is a Toyota. It's a Toyota. Wow. And this is how wealth transfer doesn't happen or does happen, is somebody will end up taking this money and they're a millionaire and they're going to buy a used Tundra. They're going to buy yeah. a used Camry, a used Cadillac, yeah. and they're going to write a check for it. And then they're going to invest $3,000 a month and make 400 grand. <laughs> and on the other side, someone's going to say, I got that same car, yet they're going to bury themselves. They're going to bury their financial future in the financial future of those who love them and those who come after them with this type of nonsense. And this is why we tell you guys, like and share the show people it's financial literacy at, at its finest people Man. need it they don't know this is family tree stuff right they don't here. know this is this is ruining his family tree he doesn't even know it he thinks he's gotten a good deal he's so excited he's sharing it on social media and we see that we people need to know this information like and share the show so that people can get what we're teaching which is knowledge and we all know that knowledge is power to the Ramsey Show. I'm Jade Warshaw. This is Dr. John Deloney, and we are going to give you real talk about your life and your money and your relationships. So give us a call. The number is 888-825-5225. Just be prepared because we're going to keep it real. Let's go to Jean Je Jeannie, who's in White Plains, New York. What's going on, Jeannie? Hi, John. Hi, Jade. Um, I have a very, very, very big, big problem. Uh -oh. um, I lost my, I'm 58 year old single. Mom of three grown boys. I lost, um, I had a trusted friend um, 
watching or my money, and um, we lost it all, 400000 in a brokerage firm, and he went into my retirement fund, so it's over 600000 that I lost. Oh, no. Um, obviously, I'm devastated, um, but thank you, Dr. John, that I've been listening to you for a long time, so I've been trying my best. I'm in, like, trauma therapy, and <laughs> trying my best. I'm a nurse. Um, I, I make around $80,000 a year. I took a second job, and I'm bringing in an extra $4,000 a month. Um, I own a home that I have four hundred thousand dollars in equity, and I'm just not sure what the next step is for investing. I'm. I could sell the. Should I sell the house? Because I always led my life, you know, correctly. No credit card debt. I paid for my children's college, and now this is where I'm stuck. All right. Oh, oh, Go hold ahead. On a um, Jeannie, I hate this for you. You trusted a close friend, huh? Yes. Was that friend um, like so? Mm-hmm. What my one of my college roommates is my smart investor pro, manages my money, right? So I I'm in the same boat. I'm gonna call him right after the show. Just kidding. I know he's doing great, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. um, it, did your friend like make stupid bets, or was your friend in charge of a mutual fund that just went belly up? You think he was trying to? make a lot of money and he was day trading basically oh, day trading geez. went through hundreds hundreds of thousands of dollars day trading and then he lost oh all gosh. that didn't want to tell me he was giving me fake statements and oh, oh. so he's a criminal your yeah. friend is a criminal that's fraud he is and i've gone to, we've gone to the white plank just you know with filing charges good, good, good. and um but okay. then he went outside of the brokerage firm to my retirement account and now oh. i'm having all these tax implications well he robbed you he stole from you I know. Yeah, so. so we're gonna deal with that um, on a separate issue. Okay, here's the big one: Have you forgiven Jeannie yet? Because until you do that, you're not going anywhere. You're gonna sit right not in yet. the middle of this. You have to. I think I will be able to, but not yet. If okay. I How fresh any, is this? Any, December eighteenth. Ooh, child. So. You're. <laughs> You're going to have to, okay, let's just be, let's just cut right to it. Be real honest. How much of this do you know in your gut things have been kind of shady for a while? Or were you just caught flat off guard? Caught flat off guard. Okay. Then you got to forgive yourself. Listen, we, we have in our, in our culture, we have like a process for when a friend stabs us in the back. We don't have a good psychology for when a friend stabs us right in the face. And that's okay. what happened to you. Yeah. They looked you in the eye. They didn't do anything conniving behind your back. He stared you down and you lost everything. Yeah. When he went into my retirement fund, he had like paper checks, you know, hard copy checks cut and took it out of my mailbox. Yeah. So he stole. I would never take out. He's a criminal. But, um, He's a crook. Listen, you yeah. have to set that down. Here's why. Your emotional reactivity is going to color what you do next. Okay. And you have to go into this next season as clear-eyed as you can be. What does that mean? Setting down the rage, setting down the anger, setting down your own self-hatred, setting all that crap down so that you can okay. make a true plan moving forward. I will listen to you. Is that, is that fair? I can't even today just, just trying to pump gas. I'm shaking because yeah, I feel are. like I'm putting diesel in because I can't even make the decision on which gas pump. That's right. Because you have lost the foundation with which you walk on, mm-hmm. which is trust in Jeannie. You got you to gotta let yourself know, okay. I got robbed. <laughs> mm-hmm. Not by your hand, but in your lap. This is not your fault. Yes. Most people most of the time have a little gut feeling that their buddy's kind of shady. Not no. you. Okay. You trusted no, this too. I did. And he stole from you. Mm-hmm. He was making fake statements, but he was handing them Hey, to me. hey, let it, you got to set it down. Because here's why. None of that, that will come up in court. Hopefully this idiot goes to jail. But yeah. mm-hmm. anytime you have to divert into, and then he did this and he did this, all you're doing is taking energy away from the current moment moving forward and dragging it into the back. Okay. Let's not go into the back seat anymore. We're done back there. We have to okay. make a plan moving okay. forward. Fair? Yes, it's fair. I I will listen to you. Awesome. Awesome. So let's talk about the financial angle of this. So you're living in a paid for home. It's worth 400,000. Tell me what other assets you have. It's not not paid for. It's worth 600,000 and I have um, 200,000 left on the mortgage. Okay. Okay. So you got 400,000 in equity. 
Tell me, tell me what, tell me what other money you have laying around. I didn't have any other money, not even an emergency fund, but I've built up um, an emergency fund of $8,000 since December 18th. Okay. Whoo, you're getting after it, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. I I work in a group home all night long. I work all night now. I -hmm. want you to keep that intensity. I want you to build up six months of expenses, whatever that is, basic expenses, whatever it takes. If something were to happen for you to keep things running in your household. Um, Okay. You told me you're taking some overtime. How much are you bringing home every month? Um, around 7,000. Okay. And how much of that is margin? Like how much of it is extra after you pay your bills, you get groceries? Oh, well, to be honest, maybe it's more because right now the margin is 5,000. Okay. So you got 5,000 of margin. That's good. So I do. First things first is you're building up this emergency fund. And then after that, of all the money that you're bringing home, I want you to start investing 15% of it. We're just walking, we're walking old school baby steps here. I want you investing 15% into your 401k basics. All right. Okay. And then after that, we can start looking at, while you're doing that, we can start looking at making extra mortgage payments because I want this $200,000 paid off. I want your home paid off by the time in the next 10 years. Like I want it done. And I want you to go into retirement at 65 with a paid for house and you've been investing. And then at 68, if you decide to retire, you will have been investing at least five thousand dollars a month for the next ten for the last ten years. Fair enough. Okay. 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 So let's don't do. Sell. I was thinking of selling the house and using that to, to build more money. No, I, I want you I to be. You I want to you to be sixty five with a paid for house that no one can ever okay. take from you. Because here's the thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. If you invest, I'm putting this in my. You know, I'm. I love a compound interest calculator. If you start yeah. with zero. And I'm just putting this in here. If you start with zero dollars after and you invest for 10 years. So from the time you're 58 to the time you're 68 and you get yes. some great rate of return funds, maybe you're in a 10 percent annualized rate of return and you're okay. doing this every monthly five thousand dollars a month. Right. Yes. If I calculate yes. that, that's showing me that you're going to have a million dollars. Really? Yes. OK. So you've got time. Like John said, it's very, the, the emotions are high right now, but our emotions aren't high. This didn't happen to us. So we, we can look at the numbers and we're looking at them clear and focused. This is just showing you investing over the course of the next 10 years, $400,000 of income and the rest of it is growth. I can do that. Yeah, you, you can. can do that. And you're going to do more I, because you're working like a wild woman right now. I am because I can't be home. If I am home, all I just do is cry. But if I'm at work, I'm okay. Okay, but hold on. Don't work yourself into a grave as punishment for what you think you did wrong. Okay. You got hit in the mouth by somebody who said, I love you. Yeah. You got taken advantage of. You did not do something wrong. So you're going to have a season. You're going to have a decade when you thought you'd be landing the plane. You ain't landing the plane, honey. You're going to be working hard. Yes. But we're going to be working for something, not to punish ourselves. Mm-hmm. Okay, that makes sense. I'm working for something, not to punish. Okay. We're working so that at 70, you're going to be one of those rad New York ladies with huge glasses walking around telling guys like <laughs> me to get off the sidewalk with our hacky sacks. That's what you're That's working right. for, right? You don't need to beat yourself up. You didn't do anything wrong. You got robbed, man. And now we're going to go make it moving forward. Hang on the line. We're going to hook you up with Financial Peace University. We want you to watch all the courses. And we're going to hook you up with a session with a financial coach to give you some peace of mind moving forward. This is The Ramsey Show. Solutions. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create amazing relationships. I'm your host, Jade Warshaw. I am joined by your other host, 
Dr. John Deloney. He is here with me and we're taking your calls for the next hour. You can give us a call. The number is 888-825-5225 and we will do our best to give you our best advice as it relates to your life, your money, and your situation. So give us a call. Let's head over to the phone lines where I see Mike from Naples, Florida. What's going on, Mike? How you doing, guys? We're doing good. How about you? Doing good. Um, I'm actually 24. I graduated college with my master's. Mm -hmm. I have no student loans, no debt. I have $2,000 in my savings and $2,000 in my Roth IRA. But I made a stupid decision, and I have a car loan for about $32,000, and I make around $48,000 a year. So, Woo! When did you get the car? Uh, I got it in November. I got it brand new. And after listening to you guys for about a month, I feel really stupid. <laughs> What's the and payment? And I want that thing gone <laughs> right away. What's the payment, Mike? Hit us. Uh, five seventy a month. Oh, Lord! Wow. Got a little bit of the diarrheas. <laughs> How did you find us, Mike? <laughs> How did I find us? Find you guys? Yeah. My parents love listening to you guys. Um, my parents actually um, swear by you guys. And I thought having no debt or nothing, I'd be fine with the car payment. But with rent and now the car payment, I just want it all gone. I love it. They <laughs> swear by us and you swear at us. Right. Right. <laughs> But we're with we're with you, brother Mike. We got you. So, what's the car worth if you if you look to pri sell it privately? What would you get for it? Uh, I was looking since it was so brand new. I was they actually didn't give me a value on Kelly Blue Book, but I could probably get around. I'd say around thirty two, thirty three. Okay, so you think you could sell it for what you owe on it? Yeah, and but the thing is, I want to get another car just used and yeah. i don't know how much i'm gonna to put towards that all of it a hundred percent don't buy another car without cash brother yeah so but. okay so <laughs> hold on yeah but uh you're gonna end up in the same spot no i i don't want to buy another car and go totally in debt i want to buy it cash but I but want you to know, want like, more than two thousand dollars worth of car no, I'm I'm fine with like, what can I get for two thousand? That's well, that's something that's embarrassing that no one would want to date and that will get you from A to Z. Well, I think you can get more than a two thousand dollar car. Let's look at it. The month. Let's see. It's February. It's we're midway through February. Let's say that you you decide you're going to put this car up for sale. It's going to take a while for it to sell. So let's pretend yeah. like you got four weeks in front of you. How much margin mm -hmm. can you? How much money can you scrape up in the next four weeks? Um, I guess scrape up a good amount. I'm actually getting a bonus for work, an extra $500 on a paycheck. Okay. And you live at home, right? Uh, I'm renting currently. Oh, you're renting. Okay. Um, so how much could you scrape up? Could you scrape up 2000 bucks? Yeah, I can definitely scrape up 2000 bucks within the four weeks. Can you scrape up 3000 Um. Sell that guitar. Yeah, you don't even play I, it anymore. I'm gonna keep going yeah, can, higher. Can we scrape up four? <laughs> I was I was looking to try and scrape up another two or three thousand, um, push into four. That's and then what I would do. Like a car like that. There you That's go. That's exactly what you Done. do. Keep a thousand dollars saved. Don't spend your emergency fund, but take that. You know, you've got two k saved. Keep one aside, and then take that one and put it with the three or four that you can scrape up and buy yourself a four or five thousand dollar car. Sell this one. And you're out of it. And then scrape up another four or five thousand dollars, and in a couple of months, put it. You know, sell the the used car you just bought and get yourself a ten thousand dollar car, because it's not going to lose any more value. Yeah. Now, do I take the hit and sell it quicker and like take a hit on it, or do I wait a little while to on sell what? it on the car? You you like sell it for less? No, no, no. You don't, you shouldn't have to take a hit. I mean, it's fairly. You've you've only had it three months. Mm. I put it on the market as soon as you can. Like I said, I wouldn't sell it back to the dealer. I would do private sale because if you take it to the dealer, they're going to take you for a ride. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Yeah, sell it private sale and then you'll get what you paid for it. And like you said, maybe you'll get a thousand bucks more, but I would definitely do that. And by the way, you're going to get desperate and you're going to go to a talk to a dealer, even though Jade said not to. 
and they're going to convince you to roll equity into something else. Please don't do that because if you do, if you do that, just email us because you'll be calling us back in a few months wanting to shoot the other foot. <laughs> no, no, I definitely want. Don't want to do that. I'm about to go outside and take pictures of it and list it right now. There List you go, it. That's man. what we're doing. You're Got getting it. off the call. You're listing that. At the end of the month, you're buying yourself a five thousand dollar car, and then in a couple months, like I said, you're going to scrape up that same four or five thousand dollars, put it with your used vehicle, trade it in, and trade up. And that's how this thing works. I, I talked about this. Uh, a couple weekends ago, John, because, you know, people hear us on the show all the time say, oh, just buy a car in cash. And there's a reality there of if you've never done that before, it feels really intimidating. And because you're coming from a world where you're used to going to the dealership and buying a $25,000 car, a $30,000 car, a $35,000 car, when people hear us say, oh, from now on, buy cars in cash, they're thinking that we're just suggesting that you just hop on down to the you know dealer and you've got thirty thousand dollars cash in your pocket and you just fork it over for some people that's the reality but for most of us that doesn't happen until a couple of steps up the ladder you know what i'm saying so what it really looks like is exactly what we saw in this call it looks like you starting out with a car that you're probably a little bit embarrassed about right it's that five thousand dollar beater and the thing about when you buy and people get all nervous and up in arms about used cars but i'm like guys all cars require maintenance, all right? So do your research, make sure you're getting one that hasn't been in a thousand wrecks, right? They, they tell you everything about the car nowadays. So do your research, get your car, and just understand when you buy a beater like that, it's already taken the, the huge appreciation, depreciation hit. Right. It's already gone down like a rock. And if you're only planning to hold on to it for a little while. And so when you go to sell it again and add money with it to trade up, it's going to retain most of its value. Right. It's not going to completely, you know, be worth zero. And so you walk this thing. It's like a ladder and you go rung by run. You start with a $10,000 car and you add $2,000 to it or $3,000 and you go little by little. And maybe one one time you're able to add $5,000 to it. But when you don't have a car payment, it makes it a lot easier to save up that money because most people's car payments are $650 a month, which means in two months, you could have $1,300. Wow. So you see how quickly this can happen. In six months, that's $8,000 or more mm. that you can add. That's fast, guys. That's how this thing works. And you do it little by little. And before you know it, you do have a $30,000 car that you paid for in cash. That's how this thing works. And that's how you do it. John, I'm in. John ain't got nothing to say. He's like, yeah, Jade, that's how you do it. Clap it up. Hands in the middle on three. Cash cars on three. One, two, three. Cash cars. This is The Ramsey Show. The Ramsey Show. I'm your host, Jade Warshaw. Your other host today is Dr. John Deloney, host of the amazing YouTube show, The Dr. Delo Do Dr. John Deloney Show. Let me say it right, John. Jeez. Oh my goodness. So if you haven't checked out his YouTube show, be sure to check it out because it's going off. Uh, let's talk about this Ramsey Show question of the day. Your Ramsey Show question of the day is brought to you by Neighborly, your hub for home services. Window Genie is a neighborly brand that does more than just windows. This time of year, they also take care of clogged gutters, which can damage your roof, windows, eaves, and more. Find a window genie location near you at neighborly.com slash Ramsey. All right, today's question comes from Stephanie in Arizona. Stephanie writes, my husband recently admitted to me that he has a gambling addiction. He has $300,000 in debt, has been stealing from our savings accounts, cleared out his 401, has not been paying the bills, etc. How do we even begin cleaning up this mess? Oh, man. Wow. We just had a call like yeah, that a couple did. hours back. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to um, I'm gonna really bullet point this and then hop in, Jade, um, 
we can get to the money part of it. Um, I think it's important. There's two sides of this. Number one is the the trauma to your marriage. The marriage as you knew it is over. The person you knew has is revealed themselves. And so trying to quote unquote get back to the way things were, that's a that's a fool's errand. If you stay married and you choose to um, work through this financial infidelity, then we're going to build a new marriage. That's number one. You're going to feel like uh, you've been on a boat all day and then you get back on dry land and everything feels wobbly and off. That's what it's going to feel like because everything that you have, the, every way you've lived is different now because the person who was your ride or die, who stood before your friends and family and God and said, I do forever, stole everything from you and has dug a hole for the family. It's going to be pretty significant. Mm. So that's number one. Number two, and by the way, to deal with that, I would get a couple of friends. I would get a counselor. I would get a journal that I write in every day. You're going to feel rage. You're going to feel weepy. You're going to feel anger. You're going to feel like frustrated. Write that crap down and get out of your body. Number two is your four walls. You have to make sure your bills are paid and that you have a home, that you have shelter, you got food, you got transportation. You're going to have to take care of the basics. You're going to have you're going to have all kind of debtors and credit card people calling you. The first thing you get is make sure you got a house, make sure you got food, make sure your kids are safe. Okay. Uh, make sure you can get to work and back and paying the bills. That means you're going to have to go in and see who does the water, who does the electric, who does, where's our rent or our mortgage and dig into all those and make a plan and start paying those things. If you can't, well, that's a whole other conversation. Call us on that one. Um, the third one is um, hopefully your husband is in rehab of some sort, some sort of um, Gamblers Anonymous, some sort of 30 day, 60 day, 90 day um, inpatient treatment. Um, this is a big 300 grand in debt plus stealing from your future, wiping us 401. This is a bad problem and he needs to go get professional help. When he gets out, then y'all are going to begin to create something new. But as we mentioned earlier, 90 days, 120 days, you are keeping the money in your account. He doesn't have access to the money, doesn't have access to the bills. But I thought we were built. Nope. He's got to rebuild trust from Lego one, square one. Um, and so we're going to create a world where Stephanie's in charge of the money for a while until there's some some healing that's happened. Um, there's a new marriage being built. And Stephanie, you begin to regain trust. And this is going to take years and years to, to heal from. Mm. So that was a lot. I just kind of threw it no, all. No, I support but. that message. I, I'm not going to add anything else to it because I think I think that's right on, John. It's dark, man. It is dark. That's tough. That is so 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 tough. Ooh, I'm sorry that you're going through that, Stephanie. But I think John gave you a great uh, pathway to move forward, and it's not going to be easy. But at least you know the steps to take. Oh, after that, let's go to the phone lines. <laughs> yeah, listen, yeah. I got to segue right out of it because there's no... I feel listen, like we need to have like a, a... We sing a song together or something. There's no... Cle- Kumbaya. There's All right, no, let's go to Cody yeah, and let's go Reno. To, <laughs> Nevada. <laughs> Cody, you're up next. What's going hey. on, buddy? Hey, how you guys doing? Doing good. How can we help? Good. So right now I'm kind of in a pickle of deciding if me and my wife should continue staying and renting in our apartment or if we should start trying to look towards buying a home right now. Okay. Tell us more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So right now between me and her, we make about 120000 a year plus maybe 10000 a year in bonuses. Okay. Our rent right now is 1250 a month. And each month that we're renting, we're able to put 3000 in our savings. Nice. We've currently got 41000 saved right now. Um, and we take home about 7500 a month um, after all of our taxes and stuff. Okay. So you're trying to decide, do we buy, do we rent? What do we do yep. here? So you're taking home 7,500 a month in income. You've got 41,000 mm-hmm. saved and you've got your rent at a level to where you're still able to kind of sock away $3,000 in savings. Yes. Did I get that? Mm-hmm. That's good. That's great. So what's keeping you? Do you have any other debt? Tell me, do you have debt? So the only debt we have is 20000 in student loans, and she's a speech pathologist where she's working at a low-income school that is um, paying off part of her loans after she's been working there for five years. Okay, how paying off part of her student loans? Um, I think it's about ten to 15000 of it is what they'll pay off, and she owes about twenty. Okay, is it is it the... Is it the school doing it or is it the government doing it? 
Uh, I'm not 100 percent sure if it's the school or if it's the um, county that we're in that's kind of offering that because she's working at a lower income school. Here's oh, what I want, I want to make sure you write you write down the math on this. Um, mm-hmm. if, if if she has a service orientation towards low income, awesome. That's all. That's fantastic, and I'll support mm-hmm. that till the end of time. It's going to come at a cost to your family, and that cost is absolutely worth it sometimes if that's if that's what your mission is. But mm-hmm. if she's making forty thousand dollars at school X and they promise to pay off $10,000 of, of her loans, but she can go work private and make $75,000. This is not a deal for your family. Thank you, John. Okay. Uh-huh. I want y'all to sit down and do the math and it might be, which is almost often the case. If you chain yourself to student loans, you are forcing yourself to put your mission second and honor the bank's commitment first. We hear it all yeah. the time from people who want to do ministry. They go, to, they they spend six figures on theology school or whatever. Cool, you got to go get a job, mm. and then mm-hmm. after you pay off your debts, then you can go do your ministry. Same with mental health professionals. It's similar to speech pathologists who want to work in a low income area. The mission's amazing. It's beautiful. It's essential. And if you can't afford it, you can't afford it. How many years in is she? Um, she's on her second right now. Okay. I'm with John 100% on that. A personal preference as well, where she wouldn't want to go into the private sector and likes to work. I got that. Sports. But she might have to, she might have to do something she doesn't prefer for 18 months mm-hmm. or 24 months so that her whole family okay. can be safe. If I'm, if I'm her, right. what I'm going to go to that, that school, I'm going to say, listen, can you just reimburse me? Cause I'd like to pay this off. I don't want this hanging around my neck. If I show you the, if I keep record of all my payments, will you reimburse me when it's after the five years so that I can just go ahead and pay this off? That's the deal that I would make okay. because there's no sense in you having to make payments or having to have this around your neck. You guys can afford to pay it off today. And mm-hmm. that's the, that's what I would say to them. And if for some reason they're like, no, or that's weird, that it's not a deal that I want to do because it's either five, it, you know, it's either 15,000 or it's not, it either is, or it isn't whether they write you a check, it's the same check that they're cutting. So you having to keep yeah. it around, should it matter? It's who's making the payment or not. Does that make sense? Yeah, Although I sometimes, you know, sometimes logic goes out the window, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, when you get a mission <laughs> yeah, exactly. situations. Well, here's but, the other thing. If, uh, if y'all can just pay and people are going to give me all kind of grief, I don't care. Um, if you can afford it, pay it off. Okay. And they have a special program that if you want to keep debt strapped around your neck or you're a, that's all you can do to hang on so you can keep working at this school and taking care of those kids, um, cool. That's, that program is not for us because we got the money. We're just going to pay it off. And we're going to move on with our life. I like Jade. If they'll, if they'll write you a reimbursement check, that'd be amazing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, get rid of the debt either way. And by the way, when you buy this house, when the time comes, make sure you've got three to six months saved first. And then you're buying it on a 15-year fixed rate mortgage where the payment's no more than 25% of your take-home pay. That's the deal. to The Ramsey Show, and I'm so glad that you're here. I'm Jade Warshaw. This is Dr. John Deloney to my right. Or if you're listening, the other voice that you hear is Dr. John Deloney's. Um, And I want to tell you guys about a brand new event that we're so excited for. It's coming up here in the spring. It is a total money makeover weekend event. It's a whole weekend, May 10th and 11th, and it's here in Nashville, Music City. And we have a really cool event venue. We call it The Rec. Um, It's up on our property on the hill. When I say our property, I'm talking like like I've owned the place. It's D Money's property, <laughs> it's, but yeah, the Big Eagle. It's his property, but it's on cool. property. It's right up the hill, and it's an amazing state of the art 
theater. I'm going to call it a theater. Yeah, what would you call it? It's a theater. It? It's a 2,500 seat theater, but it's a, it's a masterpiece. It's really cool. It's awesome. And so we're doing the Total Money Makeover Weekend there. It's a three day event. You can go to RamseySolutions.com slash events to look at tickets. But man, it's everything that you need. If you've been listening to this show, whether you've been listening for 10 years or 10 minutes, it is for you because you hear us all the time walk through the baby steps. We're always talking about, oh, and baby step one, do this and all the way up to baby step seven. And it really is that we're going to go through all of those baby steps. There's something there for everybody, no matter where you are in your journey. Um, this is going to be for you. It's going to be that rally to keep you going forward. You're going to be around like minded people. You're going to leave feeling so good and you're going to be so excited. You're just going to want to run through walls and, you know, tear your shirt like Usher. You're going to be so excited. So. I want you to be there. We're going to do Q&As live throughout the weekend. It's going to be so, so fun. Very different from any of the other Ramsey events you've attended. So make sure to get your tickets. Early bird tickets start at $99. That's only for a limited time, though. So get them now because uh, those are going to sell out super fast. Um, like John said, the Ramsey Event Center holds 2,400 people. So seats are limited and you don't want to wait to get those tickets. So get them now. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash events. John. All I'm right. excited. Let's do this. It's just going to be a hoot, man. I a love hoot. doing events up there. Let's go to Brian. He's in Midland, Texas. That's my neck of the woods. What's up, Brian? Hey, how are you doing? All right, man. What's up? Uh, so I guess my question is, so I had a like a late start to my adult life, if you will, because I turned 30 in prison. Okay. Um, so I've been, you know, just really focusing on working and, you know, building a career and whatnot. Good for you, man. Um, I, how long have you been out? Uh, 13 years now. Okay, so you're 43, mid-40s? Yes, sir. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Been working hard, staying out of trouble? Uh, yes, sir. All right, I'm proud I of you, man. I want to do that again. Good for you. That's that's a hard that's hard uh, road when you get out, so good for you, man. I'm proud of you. What's yeah, up? Appreciate it. Um, well, I feel like I just keep getting caught into a lot of the same traps as probably most of the people that call in. Um, you know, over the course, since getting out and all that, um, I've put together a good career. I make pretty good money. Um, but I have an expensive life and it's not so much a lifestyle. It's, I think it, it comes with the career I have and the job I have. Cause I'm, I work out here in Midland, but I live in Virginia and I have kids in Oklahoma. Um, so there's a lot of travel that, you know, in order to fulfill all ends of the duties, you know, I, I spend a lot on travel and I, I have responsibilities in terms of child support and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I want to change some um, of your I'm language. Is that cool? What's that? I want to change some of your language before we get going. Is okay. that cool? Uh, yeah, and, and the whole conversation we're going to have, me, you, and Jade, I want you to, like, picture we're sitting there at Rose's in Midland, and uh, I, haven't, I ordered several things at Queso, and we're, it's just three buddies hanging out, okay? So this isn't me getting on to you. It's me sitting with you, okay? Yeah, no, I understand. All right. Okay. I don't ever want you to say I got caught in a trap again. Okay. I don't ever want you to say I've just found myself in this life. I mm -hmm. want you, and well, you've I been doing that. this for I 13 years. <laughs> I want you to stand up as tall as you can, as, the, as a part-time Texan you are, and I want you to say <laughs> I am taking full ownership of the chaos that has become my life. Okay? Yep, I can do that. That I can do. Excellent. And so once we take full ownership, we don't we don't fall into traps anymore. I don't buy stupid stuff. I don't have houses all over the country. I do what I have to do, and then we go from there. Is that, is that, is that a good place okay. to start? Yeah. Fair okay. Enough. Tell me about this house. Like you live in Virginia, but you work in Midland. Okay. Uh, so we rent out there. Um, out where? To be honest, up until out where? Uh, up in uh, Virginia. What's in Virginia? Uh, girlfriend, I guess, if you will. So you're going to Virginia just to see your girlfriend? Uh, I mean, I only go every few months. But, but, you, but you're renting a house a there? It, well, the house in Texas is provided through work. Why don't you live there? Uh, and just vi visit Virginia spot. every few years? I mean, every few months. Uh, no, that is what I do. I do basically live in Texas. But it, it, uh, it I, gives me a... Like a residence, if you will, because I can't claim the work address as a residence. But let me ask a clarifying question. You said we rent yeah. up in Virginia. Who's Girl, paying? Girlfriend and I, we, we share the house. Okay, and you're splitting the rent. 
Yes. Does she live with you in Midland when you're in Midland? No, because her career is based over in Virginia. So basically she's got most of her rent subsidized by a dude who only comes home every few months. Yeah, unfortunately, that is the case. That's not unfortunate. That's the th- that's the deal you set up. But she is she's getting the better end of that deal, yeah. my brother. Yeah, I don't like no, that I for agree you. On that one, yeah. not, I don't think you're wrong on that one. <laughs> okay. I, I, but, what you need, you have a home and, and you have a work home. Yeah, why can't you? And why she can't can you live in, in Virginia. Because it doesn't have a like a federal address. Get a PO box in but, Midland. Um, I mean, I guess I could. Yes. But does that? You have a maybe home. I, maybe I don't understand how all this works, right? Yeah. Um, I didn't know if you could put that on a driver's license or, you know, any of that stuff. Like that, don't you have to have a residence? Where are you living? Are you in a Are you in a trailer park? As because you're out in the field. I mean, it's a man camp for the most part. Okay, but, but you're living provided. out in the field. Yes. You would be better off financially so spend my, okay, and ahead. psychologically and spiritually if you rented a one-bedroom apartment in Midland also. And then once every few months, if you want to go visit your girlfriend in Virginia, you could go visit her at her place or you could get a VRBO and save yourself a jillion dollars. No, I mean, you're not wrong. Catch me up. What's a man camp? A man camp is like uh, when they're working they out. workers. Yeah, they're working okay. on the oil fields. Got and it. Okay, they just, got it. they'll have a whole bunch of uh, either small houses or trailer houses. And how long? Do, uh, yeah, can they're, you, they're trailer houses. And you stay in there for how long? How how long are the stints there versus where you I could do live 20 elsewhere? Twenty days on, ten days off. Twenty days on, ten days off. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with John, and I just think the girlfriend thing—you having a rent that far away—she just needs to have her own place to live. And if you come visit, you stay with her, if or she you come stay visit a, you. Midland's you know, beautiful. It's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not Virginia. It's not. not for sure. Okay, so that—that's thing one. Like, let's rectify that because that's a lot of money going out the door. Where you could be, like yep. John said, getting yourself a one bedroom or a studio place in Midland that serves you better, and you know. That's your time. I don't like saying man camp, but that's like your time away from the man camp. All right. That's thing one. Let's talk about Oklahoma City. Is that where your kids are? It is. Correct. And how often are you going there? I go there one one weekend a month. I get them. During that 10 days off, I go up there and see them at least once. I would love for you to have a small house that you're buying equity into in Oklahoma. That's your, where it needs to be. By your children. Yeah. I think it's okay. time to cut girlfriend loose, or if girlfriend wants to move across the country, that's cool. But you're a dad, and your kids have lost a big chunk of their life with their dad. And I want them, when they're 25, to see, dude, my dad, A, turned it around, B, worked so hard out in that hot Texas sun, and the, or this weekend, that crazy freezing Texas winter, and then he came to see us as, as often as he could. But brother, you're making too much money in in an organization. I mean, it, it will roll over when gas prices, when oil prices drop. They're going to cut everybody, and so it goes up and down and up and down. But you're making too much money to be splitting it across the country like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, we didn't get to find out more information from you, but we're going to get you hooked up with Financial Peace University so you can walk through, figure out how to pay off this hundred thousand dollars of debt that you have, and how to best optimize your income and your time. So Austin's going to pick up and make sure that you are set up with financial. Peace University and Every Dollar. This is The Ramsey Show. You're listening to the radio show, The Ramsey Show, which is also on podcasts and YouTube. Show. Listen, I don't know what comes out of my mouth sometimes, John. You're but... listening to the radio show. <laughs> 
I'm Jade Warshaw. That is Dr. John Deloney keeping me in check, man. He needs to. Your scripture and quote of the day. If your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. That's Proverbs 25, 21. And then Paul Stanley from Kiss says this. Charity is not an option. It's an obligation. All right, Paul. He feels, str- he feels strongly about that. I'll go along That's with it. That's one of my favorite Proverbs in the whole wide world. Yeah? Yep. If your enemy, let's read it again. If your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. I hate, like that. Hate has never solved a single problem. That's a word. In the history of, the hu- of humankind. It's never solved a problem. No. Never solved a problem. Only love can do that. Never solved a problem. We're being very philosophical. One day. We're going right. to figure that out. We will. Let's go to Josh. He might have some answers in Cincinnati, Ohio. What's going on, Josh? I think you guys are taking my call today. I appreciate it. You bet. Um, so I am a recent college grad, and I'm just trying to figure out what's the best way to pay off some of these loans. And they're all federal, and I owe about $24,000 in okay. federal debt. Okay. Um, So right now, like the options I have are the save plan through the Biden administration. Okay. And it's all, you know, it's income based. So they're going off of my previous year income, which is about 35, 36,000. What's this Um, year's income? However, this year's income has gone up to about 60. Mm. (laughs) So it's like 10% of your income. So currently I'm paying $30 a month until January of next year. Uh And then they would reevaluate what my income is. Okay. So that's, I'm just kind of wanting to know, like, what are your thoughts on this? Is this the best way to go about it? Is there other ways? Um, you know, I'm trying to work the, the baby steps and I have step one done and step two is obviously paying off debt. Is this your so only debt? Kind of that's my only debt. In your situation, because it's your only debt, I wouldn't do it. I would just, I, because the only purpose that I would use, and I've gone on this soapbox before, so I won't get too deeply into it, but the only way that I would go on a plan like this is if you had, if you were like, Jade, I've got a lot of debt, and you listed all the different ones, credit cards and personal loans and cars and student loans and houses, I would say, okay, because when you get out of debt, what you're ultimately doing is you're listing all of your debts, smallest to largest, and the goal is to pay minimum payments on everything and then have a bunch of money left to throw out the smallest debt. And so when you're make, making minimum payments, yeah, you want those minimum payments to be small. So if that were you yeah. and you had a bunch of other debts, then I would say, yeah, go on the save plan temporarily so you can have a smaller minimum payment, so you can have more money to sock away at that smallest debt. But in your case, this is your only debt. So you're in the mode where you're socking all the money that you can at this debt. The goal isn't to pay less. In your case, the goal is to pay as much as you possibly can. So if you're right. making $60,000 this year, or if you're on track to make $60,000, i am looking at that and I'm going, okay, this guy, are you single? Yeah. Are you, what's your living situation? I currently rent. I have three roommates. So that's kind of another part of my thing. You know, I eventually... Within the next year or two, I would like to purchase a house. Well, we can't get to to that yet. I can. We got to go in order. So with the baby steps, you know, this is all fitting together in a nice tapestry. So we want to do it, you know, the right way at the right time. So if I'm you, I'm going, okay, I'm going to make $60,000 this month. Can I find a way to make 15 more so that I'm at 85 or 75? I'm sorry. And then can I, can I pay off 24,000 in a year? I think yes. I think you pick up a side hustle where you're making a little bit more. And I think that you knock this out in 12 months. And then. So I'm kind of working these steps a little funny because I have been with my company now for three years. I just recently, you know, since graduating, I got a new job within the company. Uh So I've already been investing into my 401k. I'm at 13% with them matching five. Is that something you would recommend? I would lower to get some of that money back into my bank account. I want you to be able to invest, but I want you to invest in the right way. Because what happens here, if you go your route, everybody thinks the baby steps or the plan that we have is just kind of this, this idea. But the fact of the matter is Mm -hmm. there's a method to it. And if you don't do it in the right order, you can actually end up screwing yourself pretty bad. So, (laughs) because what happens is you, you're investing in that match and you're doing great. But if you don't have money saved for an emergency, and you buy a house, what happens is your 401k becomes your emergency fund. And before you know it, you're yeah. dipping into your 401k. So there's some things there that are holding you back. Also, if you're investing 
that percentage, that's money that you could be using to pay off this $24,000 of debt. Because yeah. what I want, what I want to get your brain thinking is that math, math is math, whether we like it or not. So mm -hmm. if you save $24,000 in your 401k, but you owe the federal government, government $24,000, you, you're at zero. That money is not yours. Yeah. You tell yourself yeah. it's yours, but it's not really yours. Can you do a fun thought experiment with me, Josh? Sure. <laughs> uh, it's 2024. What's going to happen this year? An election year. Yeah. And um, we don't know <laughs> who's going to get elected. We don't, we don't know. We, <laughs> we don't know anything. And we especially don't know the people who are running, what their platforms even are, what things they even right. want to do. And so right. fast forward to December 31st of 2024. We'll have some sort of answer, sort of, maybe, <laughs> who knows. Would you rather be sitting on December 31st with your fingers crossed, hoping that the federal government, which, by the way, has done a real bang up job the past 50 years <laughs> of keeping his promises and doing math problems well, that they are going to continue whatever plan you've signed up for or would you rather be sitting on december 31st owing like doing what jade just said work your job and then go put in some good podcast and uber all throughout the evening and yeah. then on saturdays go uber again and sundays uber again and you wake up and it's <laughs> december 31st and you don't owe anybody anything and then when things get yeah. chaotic and hectic you go whew at least I'm off the hook and I'm not chained to anything. How does it, which one of those feels like it's going to feel better? <laughs> Definitely the one where I don't owe anyone anything. <laughs> Bro, I would, I would triple down. I would do exactly what Jade said. I would make December 31st this maniacal. I will owe nobody anything by December 21st, yep. December 31st. My family, I'm going to send you all handmade cards for Christmas. Friends, we ain't, we're going to do nothing this year. That's right. And we are going to be free come December 31st. And then whoever gets elected and whatever's on fire at that point, um, we'll be able to handle that knowing that we're not going to go down with the ship. Yeah, I like that. Josh, how much money do you have saved? I have about 3000 plus about 20000 in my 401k. Okay. So... We're going to drop. We're going to walk the baby steps. Let's commit to walking. Let's commit to the process and know that this is the plan. Like there's some peace that you have in walking a plan. When you walk a plan, all, suddenly all of the answers are answered for you. That's one of the benefits of choosing a, pan, a plan and saying, okay, I'm going to do that one. Because then when you have these questions of should I invest yet? The plan tells you, should I pay off my debt first? The plan tells you. And as long as you walk the plan, you can rest in knowing, okay, I'm, I'm, do, I'm doing things right. I'm going in this direction. It's worked for millions of people, including the, the woman that you're talking to online right now. <laughs> so I can tell you that it works, right? So that's what I want you to do. I want you to take $2,000 of the money that you have saved, and I want you to start putting it towards this debt. Now you have $22,000 of student loan debt. And I want you to get crazy and pay this off. You're going to have it done so quickly. Then you're going to save up three to six months of expenses. Then you're going to start saving for that down payment on a house. But you don't need to worry about, you know, you don't have to do all this at once. You know, you just graduated for heaven's sake. You're doing right. You got a, a house with two roommates. You know, you didn't pull out a lot of student loan debt. I'm glad that you didn't. So let's just take our time and walk down that road. And my guess is that in two and a half years, you're going to be a homeowner and it's going to be pretty, pretty good. Choose freedom, my brother. Choose freedom. Choose freedom. I love it. Thanks for hanging out with us for a couple of hours here on The Ramsey Show. Uh, we love that you were here. We're glad that we were able to take some of your calls. We hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you back here next time. 